Hey guys, this is a quick assembly tutorial for my Neo Breach design for the V1 Nimble. Uh, so to start with, uh, you will need a, a V1 Nimble. Uh, if your Nimble does not look like this, this is a V1.2. I assume this will work for all uh, all the V1s, but uh, if it doesn't look like this, uh, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> Along with that, you will need the printed parts we have here uh, in the housing, the tension arm. Uh, you'll need one of these two breech options, which I'll explain in a moment, and then a uh, spring washer and a uh, tension knob. Uh, you should print all of these at uh, 0 0.1 layers. Uh, 0.2 first layer is fine, but don't uh, don't get away from multiples of 0.1. Um, optimized for a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and I printed all these in PLA. Uh, do not use supports. Um, the recommended bomb, I mean, just recommended, you do you, of course. Um, all the fastening hardware is M3, a 25 millimeter button head screw, a 16 millimeter cap head screw, three nuts, a fairly stiff spring, ideally, um, and then for the for the breech version that uses the stock nimble breech parts, the seven millimeter nimble micro bearing and pin, um, or for the bogey version, which is a double either like the next extruder on the Prusa. Um, two 6mm M3 cone head grub screws and two 6mm 2.5mm thick 3mm ID micro bearings. So I um, haven't tested this enough to prove whether one is better than the other. It's possible that uh, one or the other might be better for different kinds of filament. Um, but I can say that the double idler seems to do a pretty good job of getting a good grip on the filament with light tension. So, to start with, uh, let's repair the housing. This has breakaway supports inside that we'll just uh, tear out real quick. That should be all the post-processing necessary for this. Um, but of course, if at any time uh, the assembly feels like it's taking some force, you know, stop, back up, and uh, you know, figure out why. Clean up your parts. Um, so we'll take two of our M3 nuts now. One goes in a stop uh, hex hole, <clears throat> and one goes uh, in the side. Which side doesn't really matter. It's got. Uh, got hex holes in both sides because uh, turns out that uh, one, uh, one nice property of M3 cap heads is that you can mirror hex holes and the, the cap head will fit into the same size socket as the, as the M3. Come on. There we go. Now release me. Okay. Now, um, important note for assembling this, the upper part here needs to rock in, so like this motion, in and then rock. And this, as I, you know, as before, this should work uh, pretty freely, um, depending on the tolerances of your printer, let just snap together, uh, you may need to do a little cleanup, hopefully not, bring your quality printing A game, right? So that's on there. Now, set that aside. Um, to assemble the, um, the tension spring, take our last M3 nut, pop that in there.
tighten that nice uh, nice and tight so that it'll stay together <coughs> okay take your spring put that on spring washer put that on we'll set that aside okay so next uh, choose your breech um, if you're going with the stock nimble because you don't have micro bearings uh, lying around uh, you might need to ream out the the three millimeter pinhole here uh, you can just use an M3 screw and just uh, work that in and out a little bit you know, the uh, the pin needs to fit uh, and also not to even fall out so it is a little bit tight coming off the printer at least for me so um, just drop that bearing in there press that press the pin in from the side As long as the pin doesn't stick out from uh, from either side, you're good. Yep, that'll do. Uh, the uh, the double bearing version should not require any post processing. Uh, you'll notice that there are big holes and small holes. Obviously, don't try to put the co the uh, grub screws through the small holes. Um, it's intended that the cones kind of land in little cone shape receiving zones. So. Just screw that in till it bobs out. So, next step, once we've got our breech or breeches put together, uh, take your breech of choice and slot it in here. It's a little too tall to go in straight, so tilt it like so. And then work it in there. There's a, uh, there's a little grippy zone that pokes up so that you can kind of manually force this open if you need to. Then, tension arm should slot right in there. 16 millimeter cap head screw in the side right here. Uh, and uh, when you put the breech in, verify that it uh, doesn't doesn't really bind. I mean, it needs to be, you know, it shouldn't be like flopping around in there. But you also don't want it to be too stiff, or it won't. Um, you know, it the idea is kind of that it's floating in there. Um, so it shouldn't be like binding or like tight. It should be able to move in and out easily. Um, as you can see, let's see. If it, you know, if it's not just uh, dust the sides down with a little sandpaper. So there we go. So this opens only only about so far, so that, you know the breech can't fall out once the uh, once the arm is installed. Come on. There we go. Last step, uh, take your tension screw, run that in. I'm going to use the Allen key the first time just so, uh, since we're kind of working through that printed hole. There we go. And now your V1 Nimble has a tension-based breech that uh, should be a lot easier for the for the cable to turn. A lot less torque needed. Might help with artifacting. Yeah. And that's it. 
Ta-da! Enjoy!